Welcome to Sports Extra. I'm your host, Ali Gohar. Tonight, we're going to dedicate our time to tennis. We're going to discuss uh, the development of tennis in Pakistan, a game which is picking up tremendously, and there's heaps of talent here. So all it needs is uh, the right guidance. So I have two gentlemen here from the ITF to discuss the progress that they've made all over the world and the progress that they're seeking to make in Pakistan. I've been joined by Mr. Luca Santilli. Did I get that right? Correct. Executive Director, ITF. Luca, great yes, to have you on the show. Thank you very much. And we also have Mr. Amir Borghai, ITF Development Officer for West and Central Asia. Amir, great to have you on the show. Thank you. That's a pleasure. Well, first off, Thank you both for coming. It's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, before we get to tennis, I hear, Luca, you've uh, just arrived in Pakistan. This is your first time here. What have you made of it? Well, it was a, it was a trip that I was um, really looking forward to, to make. And uh, we found uh, with our colleagues in Pakistan Tennis Federation the right window. I'm also very happy because I, I had the chance to join my colleague, uh, Mir Borghe, here. And today, we, we inaugurated the resurfacing of five courts at the National Training Center in Islamabad and it uh, was very, very important and I also had a chance to meet with the press, so all very, very interesting. Amir, what about you? What have your initial thoughts been? Well, this is not my first time, actually this is my third time uh, to Pakistan. Uh, it had been always a pleasure to come to Pakistan, lovely people, but this time that's uh, great that I'm just uh, joining Luca, uh, coming together to, to this uh, wonderful country. Uh, my main uh, subject being in Pakistan is to conduct a course for, on behalf of the ITF for a group of very motivated coaches and at the same time we are, we are training a group of, uh, small group of tutors. Uh, who would be responsible to train other coaches in the future. That sounds like very exciting work and something that's needed here in Pakistan. And we're going to discuss what you think specifically needs to be done. And I'm sure you've come to uh, some uh, agreements with the Pakistani Tennis Federation. But Luca, I just want to talk about you and the wealth of experience that you have. Because I'd like you to talk us through that because then we'll all know just what you have to offer, the kind of advice that uh, you can give the Pakistani Tennis Federation is, is invaluable, the kind of guidance you can give. Absolutely. I think the, the secret is, and is, this is what we're doing with the Pakistani Tennis Federation, is to put in place a continuous engagement, a continuous conversation, uh, that we keep going um, around the world uh, whenever we meet uh, at international uh, meetings, international events, and obviously with these uh, visits. And our, our action is to ensure that we do not duplicate, but we, and we make very clear our objectives. And this is a, a priority. This is exactly what we've done with the Pakistani Tennis Federation. We have identified four strategic areas where we should invest both um, our time and our resources. So we were very pleased with the outcome of the resurface of the five courts today, uh, but we are not stopping here. The next second phase is for Pakistan Tennis to um, build three new courts, always at the same center. This will allow the Federation to host uh, top international events, in, including the South Asian Games. All these courts will be of the same surface. So facilities is one of the strategy areas. Then, as Amir said, coaching. The deliverers are very, very important. They are the link between the sport and the fans, between the sport and the players, recreational and competitive players. So that's a second strategy area. And obviously, with our events, and without performance, uh, we cannot have uh, the attention of the sports uh, authorities, of the fans, and we are ensuring that uh, the Pakistan Tennis Federation can host a number of international tournaments, which is appropriate to a country that has got a great tradition like uh, Pakistan. And we hope that uh, this investment will, uh, will reflect in an improvement in the performance of the Pakistani players and teams. 
I mean, uh, you're you're gonna uh, sort of develop a co uh, develop a course here. Of course, you've already developed, but then you uh, you're, you're you're seeking to um, improve coaching. Now, you know when when we talk about tennis or or, or any game really uh, the, that isn't the most popular game in a country, we talk about coaching and how most of the time, if a game isn't flourishing, that means the coaches aren't good enough. So that's something that's very crucial. The level of coaching needs to improve. Well, obviously, as uh, Luca explained, that's uh, four uh, strategic pillars are identified, and one of the, I think one of the most important ones is is coaching and development of uh, coaches. And the final goal of the ITF uh, uh, International Tennis Federation, specifically the development department, is to help the member member nations to become self-sufficient. This is a long-term goal to help the member nations to become self-sufficient. Uh, with, uh, on the coach education programs. So this is like a first step. So we started with this course. Uh, obviously we had some uh, similar course, uh, courses in, in the past, but uh, one, one goal set for 2019 is to help Pakistani Tennis Federation to become self-sufficient uh, and the national coach education system to be recognized at the wide level. We have different le levels of recognition for a national uh, a coach education system starting at the white level. So this is the goal agreed with Pakistan Tennis Federation and we are uh, trying to just uh, fulfill the requirements and then finally um, I think in the we can say in the first six months of uh, 2019 this goal would be achieved. Well let's hope so I mean yeah that's that's the idea that's the goal here to become self-sufficient and Luca with your uh, wealth of experience I'd like to ask you what are some of the biggest challenges in promoting and developing tennis in uh, a third world country or a country that uh, isn't or, or where tennis isn't the most popular sport? What, what are some of the biggest challenges? And secondly, what are some of the success stories uh, that, uh, that you've seen in your time? Well, the challenges are that uh, is to ensure tennis is a very international sport, it's very global. Once uh, you need to create a base, and from this base, you need to create uh, opportunities for, uh, for your people to, uh, to change life uh, through the sport. So, first of all, is to, is to be able to attract attention in, in your country and to create a community which is loyal, which is uh, loyal to the sport and uh, contributes to to development of, uh, of the game day by day. And then you have to have some ambassadors. The ambassadors are the leaders in each category, the leaders are junior level, the leaders are, are professional levels that take the flag of the country um, in nearby countries, in the region and, in, and internationally. I've uh, had uh, the a great experience uh, a few years ago I was doing the same job as Amir but I was development office of Europe uh, in particular in Eastern Europe and I remember uh, like it was uh, yesterday when I organized a, a training camp in, um, in North, uh, North Europe with five countries Ukraine, Belarus and the three Baltic countries Latvia, Estonia and Lithuania and for a week two boys two girls and a coach came and uh, we spent the uh, time training. At the end of the week, I made my report. I called London, the headquarters of the International Tennis Federation, to, to say that I identified, in my view, two potential uh, very good players. One was Vika Zarenka, mm -hmm. that became uh, world number one and yeah. uh, had a fantastic career. And the second one was Olga Govorsova, which became a top 30 player. So since uh, that time Vika was 11 years old, Olga was 12 years old. So we were able to support them in collaboration with the Belarus Tennis Federation throughout their junior career. And then we helped them to become professional player. I have many stories like this with Grigor Dimitro, with Marcos Bagdatis and uh, many other players um, around the world. We have a program that uh, helps to develop talented players, particularly those that are from nations that are both under-resourced and under-represented. So we believe that if Pakistan 
is going to show some talents mm. coming up. Our pyramid of opportunities will be able to take them to professional tennis successfully. I mean, I asked you this for a reason, Luca. So we all understand here what the ITF can do, what the, interna uh, what the ITF has, has to offer. Now it's uh, Pakistan's job and other countries that you go to. It's our job to, to not only take your help, but imbibe it and follow through on, on these agreements. Easier said than done. But if you stay the course, this can happen. Amir? Yes, uh, absolutely, because the set of support technically and financially is very defined from uh, the ITF uh, uh, perspective. I think uh, one of the big challenges that Pakistani tennis was dealing, and uh, I think this problem is more or less solved, was um, this challenge to bring the international events to mm -hmm. Pakistan. And I think it's uh, the first time I was here, 2012, I was not working for the ITF at that time, but I was uh, uh, just... Um, conducting courses and at that time it was really challenging to even bring that educational course not which is not a big event to in, Pakistan. In what sense? How was it challenging? Uh, because the, the perception especially in terms of events was uh, Pakistan was not considered a, a country uh, that safe for uh, sports uh, activities but I think this problem is solved which gives a opens up this opportunity so I think you have a great opportunity it's two year almost two years that uh, uh, the International Tennis Federation is supporting uh, Pakistan Federation in terms of hosting and organizing international events uh, last uh, December you hosted three futures tournaments yes we did which uh, was I think a great success for, for your tennis inviting and bringing, bringing uh, lots of international players from different countries I think uh, um, at the moment, Pakistani Tennis Federation and your uh, sports uh, uh, organizations should see this as an opportunity that the window is open, doors are open, so I think you should take it from there and build it up. As he just mentioned, you know, future, the Futures tournaments uh, took place here, not only, uh, not only with tennis, I mean like for squash and other sports, there have been uh, a number of international uh, events here which shows just how enthusiastic Pakistan is, but specifically uh, about tennis, I'm sure uh, uh, Mr. Bogai has, uh, because you've been here three times, you understand that Pakistan uh, loves tennis. There's a tremendous amount of talent, bundles of talent here. It's just about fostering that talent. And the idea now is to hone, uh, is to, to hone in and target uh, younger tennis players and sort of build and develop junior activities, something you know a lot about, Luca. Yes, the junior activity are the backbone uh, of uh, tennis development. And I was very pleased today when I spoke with the president, Mr. Salim Khan, and the board, uh, that their uh, objective is to increase the number of international junior events. So last year, I think we had uh, three events in, um, in Pakistan, and this year we are aiming to have uh, at least uh, five. So that's, uh, that's very important. But also to create a the pyramid opportunity, the move from the juniors to the uh, futures, which in 2019 have been rebranded, and we will, we will call them World Tennis Tour $15,000 event with a new ITF uh, World um, uh, Ranking. So this is all um, very, very exciting, and uh, we're very happy that uh, the Pakistani tennis has embraced all of these changes that the International Federation has brought into the competitive pathway. And so we are here to <coughs> define the priorities and ensure that, uh, as you said, the talented players, the young talented players in the country can compete in this tournament at home, but also they have the resources to go in, to travel in Asia and play and compete the other tournaments because the calendar, the tennis calendar is, is demanding we a players, even at a young age, should at least compete uh, for uh, 12, 14 weeks. And so we need to work with the Pakistani Tennis Federation to ensure that uh, these players have the possibility to compete not only in Pakistan, but also outside Pakistan. Uh, you've highlighted a very crucial point, and I'd like you to build on that, uh, Mr. Bogai, that, you know, Yes, of course. I mean, you have to, uh, infrastructure has to be right. You have to have, uh, you have to, uh, you have to have up-to-date 
modern facilities so young players can be groomed but international exposure as well competing in international events that too is is equally important well uh, obviously they're important um, I would like to refer to some um, sort of uh, international events that Pakistan is participating uh, we are in 2019 we are in the third year of organizing the Asian 12 and under team competition which is a new uh, competition for the whole continent. Pakistan, like other Asian continents, has this opportunity to participate uh, in, the, in the regional qualifying event and then the chance to get promoted to the Asian uh, team competition. Pakistan participates. I was in Bangkok uh, almost two weeks back mm -hmm. and uh, your team participated in the ITF um, Asia 14 and under development championships. So that's very interesting to see that Pakistan junior players especially they come as a team they they are regular participant in in the ITF uh, especially in the ITF development uh, uh, championships different age categories uh, specifically 12 and uh, 14 and under and uh, I think uh, Luca and myself we, we covered uh, th mainly three of uh, the four uh, development uh, uh, pillars and the fourth one I would like to touch it uh, briefly of course. is um, the programs there are series of programs under, under this uh, strate fourth uh, strategic pillar and uh, one specific program is the Junior Tennis Initiative. So Junior Tennis Initiative is the development program for 14 and under um, age categories, 10, 12 and, and 14 uh, specifically and uh, would be, might be interesting for, for, uh, um, for people and especially for tennis uh, uh, lovers that uh, Pakistan tennis is also being supported by the International Tennis Federation under the uh, JTI program. So every year we support uh, this program in Pakistan. We provide some equipment uh, to this program, even uh, by sort of by uh, some sort of subsidy, and uh, even with the technical support that is being provided to Pakistan Tennis Federation. That's interesting. This yeah. program goes over in uh, around 140 countries worldwide and your federation, your uh, Pakistan Tennis is a member of this world uh, known uh, junior development program. And that's fantastic to know and it's great to see that Pakistan is, is, on, is on the right path, we're going in the right direction but as both of you said there's, there's still a lot of work to be done. I want to get back to what you said earlier, some very heartening news about uh, the uh, building and inaugurating tennis courts uh, here in Pakistan and you know we've got tennis courts in Islamabad we've got some in Lahore and uh, Karachi in Karachi as well but the idea is and you already touched upon it but I'd like you to expound here Luca is to is to go further than that absolutely because unfortunately <coughs> tennis is uh, Unfortunately, tennis is global and uh, the Pakistani Tennis Federation, if they want to develop tennis, they need to think about offering um, opportunities for the players to come to Pakistan, for the international community to visit Pakistan. In order to do that, you need to build the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Tennis facilities at international standards are essential to do this and this is something that uh, we want to do. Um, additionally, uh, we want to support the National Training Center to grow and we have agreed with the Federation that an ITF expert will come to um, Islamabad to spend time with the management, with the coaches and the players at the National Training Centers to see what areas can be improved this will be for a period of time, then there will be a report that will be sent to the ITF staff in London, to Amir, the development officer. This will be processed, evaluated, and will, this will start a continuous conversation on how to improve the programs that uh, support the National Training, Training Center. So not only the infrastructure, but also the programs, they allow the infrastructure to function and to produce um, what is expected. Yeah, getting the right mechanisms in place in order to make it happen, that's very important. 
just uh, off the top of your uh, off the top of your head, Luca. I know you've only been here for the for, for a day, and I've had the pleasure of speaking to members of uh, the Pakistani Tennis Federation. You mentioned uh, Mr. Khan, who's uh, uh, who understands tennis uh, very well, and there's uh, a great deal of clarity there that both he and uh, his team have. But from what little you've seen, firstly, what improvements need to be made? Something that you noticed right off the bat that need to that, that that need to be rectified that's one and secondly how to make these academies these centers which are in the city uh, which are in like islamabad karachi or lahore uh, more accessible to uh, children or, or kids from from other parts of pakistan okay two good questions so the first one i would like to to answer that, so in my view, the Pakistani Tennis Federation has to <coughs> become more international and open up and offer to their members the possibility of international exposure. This can be done in two ways. In one way, to attract the international community, player, coaches, administrators to Pakistan through the organization of events, coaches workshop, and um, administrator workshop, international meetings. And the second one, the answer is tennis in the school. The answer is <coughs> identifying which are the tennis courts in the country um, and which schools are around these tennis courts and ensure that there is a program that links the school to the tennis courts. Then when the best uh, kids are uh, identified in the school, these kids should be offered a program into the, into the clubs and so to increase the base of, um, of the sport. This can be done quite uh, effectively. We have uh, programs in place. We have a six weeks activation program that we're going to roll out this year to um, all national associations worldwide. So this is something that uh, the Pakistan Tennis Special can take advantage of. In addition to uh, the program that Anir mentioned, that is already in place. So we're not starting from scratch. We're just uh, building on what we have at the moment and what we can do better. Right. I want to get back to the tennis courts. Uh, Amir, first I'll get uh, your take on this. How important is it to have different types of course, uh, courts uh, uh, in a country? I mean, first, I mean, like right now, the, US, the Australian Open is being played in Melbourne. That's hard court. In the U.S., you have hard courts. But come the French Open, you have uh, a clay court. In Wimbledon, obviously, uh, there's grass. In Pakistan, from what I've seen, from, from what I remember, you have hard courts and uh, one or two clay courts. So how important is that to have different types of courts across the country, not just playing on one? Well, obviously, that's very important. Today, I had an interesting discussion with coaches um, about this, uh, about the tradition, uh, Pakistan's tradition uh, used to play on grass court. Mm -hmm. So usually Pakistani players are used to play on uh, grass courts and they're quite successful on, on the grassroots. But let's consider the world. We don't have much uh, grassroots um, worldwide and uh, most of the tournaments are Today, most of the tournaments are being played on hard courts. And then we can say after hard courts, uh, clay courts are more popular. So uh, except Wimbledon with the legacy and the tradition, we don't have uh, uh, many tournaments being played on grassroots. And today I was just uh, talking to coaches that I think new generation of Pakistan players, especially the young players, should not uh, continue this uh, kind of uh, uh, legacy or... Uh, um, getting used to play on grass courts. They should adapt themselves to the needs, to the nature of today's game. And uh, uh, with, uh, with the change of surface that we had on five, five courts in the National uh, Training Center and the new hard courts, uh, it would allow them, would give them this opportunity to start adopting their uh, game uh, and, and then to get used to play on hard courts. So I think that that would be very important because after Goreshi, and Akil Khan, those two uh, Pakistan stars, used to play on, on grassroots. I think a uh, kind of a revolution is needed to, for the junior, especially for the junior players to get adopted to hard courts and, and clay courts more. Just uh, very quickly, I remember um, 
some time ago, I think it was about a year ago, I, in, I, I, I interviewed your brother, I think, and he mentioned, and who's also heavily involved in tennis, and he mentioned uh, that, uh, because I asked him a similar question to what I asked Luca, can you name some uh, success stories, and it just occurred to me, uh, he mentioned Iran as well, how tennis has picked up there, uh, a country which isn't really known for tennis, but there's a great deal of enthusiasm there, and they took the ITF's help and they stayed the course. So maybe Pakistan can look at uh, some countries like, like Iran, for example, or, 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 or other countries that, uh, uh, you know, that where tennis isn't the prime sport. Maybe that could help Pakistan as well. Well, uh, you just touched uh, the example of uh, the Iranian tennis. I think, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, tennis in Iran is uh, kind of because other sports are really strong, like mm -hmm. uh, in football, Iran is, is, is a leading country in the continent or some, in some other sports. So unfor unfortunately or fortunately, they are kind of leading the sport. But um, tennis, in terms of uh, participation, is quite uh, strong in, in Iran. And that's why um, the Iranian Tennis Federation is uh, following uh, the participation programs of the International Tennis Federation, the Junior Tennis uh, um, initiative that I already explained. So maybe 100,000 people are playing uh, this sport. Performance level, not really strong, but participation um, wise, number of people involved in, in the country, playing tennis in the country is quite big. Or the other example is the coach education program. 100,000, 300 coaches are, are working in tennis in the country. And it gives a big uh, possibility to introduce uh, the game uh, nationwide. Right, uh, Luca. Just a couple of more questions, and we'll, uh, then then uh, we will end the show. Uh, Amir uh, touched on some very interesting points here. You talked about uh, participation and how you know these things uh, developing uh, tennis or any sport really uh, it takes a little bit of time. I know you, you you've set some short term goals with the Pakistani Tennis Federation, and you're confident that they will achieve those goals. But the idea is to sort of be patient. And play the uh, and wait play the long game, the waiting game. Because if you if you're patient and you stay the course, you will see results. The idea is not to lose heart. Yes, that's right. However, for us, it's a continuous uh, continuous improvement day by day. We want to see we want to see uh, improvements, and we want to be able to measure this improvement. So if we invest in uh, resources into Pakistan tennis, we want to see also results. It's about, uh, it's about uh, investing and measuring, monitoring, and uh, having a return of this investment. One thing that probably we should have said before, and we haven't touched uh, enough, is the support of the sport authorities, right. of the government, to the sport in the country. This is uh, <coughs> fundamental to achieve results. And when you mention a successful story around the world, it's very much true that those stories have happened also when, uh, where the authorities were backing up uh, uh, the federation, the talents, and were ensuring that the infrastructure is in place. So as every big um, objectives, it's a work of many where everyone has to do their own part, and hopefully um, this will, uh, will produce a result. What is to us extremely uh, satisfying is that the leadership of the Pakistan Tennis Federation is engaged, they participate, they contribute, and uh, they are very attentive to uh, the program that the ITF is rolling out. And so all of this uh, gives, uh, in my view, uh, big hopes um, for the future, especially because now Pakistan, uh, since 2017, has come back to international tennis in, own, in, own, in, in its own right. And uh, we hope that <coughs> this will continue um, uh, for a long time. I mean, this is very positive. I mean, the fact that Pakistan has come back into international tennis, that's the first big step. But the idea is to to build on this momentum and we're all pleased that that you're very happy with the Pakistani Tennis Federation you said they're engaged and I'm sure uh, they listen to both your uh, to your recommendations and they're going to implement those but 
uh, something that, that that's talked about a lot help uh, from the state that's extremely important and I'm sure around the world where you've worked I'm sure you've traveled all sorts of places trying to develop the game and one of the reasons why the game developed was because they had help uh, from the government the tennis federation can't do it alone right they're not miracle workers so they need help from the state and then eventually of course private enterprises uh, to pump to, to pump in money and and you mentioned of course that's the only way that young Pakistani tennis players or any tennis tennis players from any part of the world uh, can succeed we already talked about the importance of going abroad playing international events that must happen absolutely absolutely what um, I think the way um, the way that we work is in partnership with the International Federation, I'm part of the International Olympic Committee. The development branch of the International Olympic Committee is called Olympic Solidarity. Mm -hmm. Olympic Solidarity has a budget of $510 million to spend in four years helping uh, all the summer and winter sports that participate in the Olympics. We in tennis um, use that money and target that money regularly. The Olympic Solidarity know that our programs are very reliable. We, for two quadriennials, the tennis has been uh, the top uh, sport in terms of technical courses funded by Olympic Solidarity around the world. Mm -hmm. We want to continue to, to take this uh, top spot. And for this reason, we talk to our member nation, including the Pakistan Tennis Federation, to ensure that they have good relationship with the National Olympic Committee they, and to access uh, resources and fund from the Olympic Solidarity. So that funding stream is very important, but the government and the institution, the municipality, they have to take their own responsibility. They need to understand that uh, investing in sport is investing in the health and uh, education of the next generation of, uh, of, of Pakistan uh, youth. So it, this is, uh, we know that they are tasked with a lot of responsibility, but it's up to us to show them that we have programs, that we have facilities, they are ready to engage the youth. And I'm sure they know that these programs, that these are very nuanced, sophisticated programs. These programs work and they've worked in many parts of the world. Absolutely. We, we, have, um, we are one of the most uh, global Federation in the world. We have 210 member nations. These member nations are, we divide them in four categories. We have uh, the top categories where they have everything, they are both represented and resourced. And these are about 50 nations. And then um, on the opposite spectrum, we have about 130 nations that need all assistance and all uh, the support, which are underrepresented, under resourced. So when we launch a program, uh, we can uh, activate this program in different parts of the world. We can take the best successful cases and use them and replicate where we see in other countries where we see the same uh, conditions in place. So this ability to be present all over the world allow us to share this best practice and to be at the forefront. Um, now, without being uh, uh, too modest, uh, tennis is competing um, with the best sports uh, in the world. Um, in some countries, only, only football is too far away um, for us, but we are very ambitious and we want our national association to be ambitious. Right. Uh, Amir, I'm going to come to you and Luca, I'll give you the last word. As we've discussed through, throughout this program, you've been here a few times, you're, uh, you're helping out uh, coaches, you're conducting workshops and training sessions for them. And of course, uh, you're, you've seen young Pakistani tennis players. Tell me, uh, and, and be honest, are you impressed with the kind of talent that you've seen? Have you seen uh, improvements in young Pakistani tennis players? And, and the coaches, of course. Well, in terms of players and especially the, the young players, yes, they are uh, those players that we have uh, worked with and we have identified uh, or they had a chance to play uh, in the ITF um, regional uh, camps in the regional circuits. They are really hard workers, talented. Uh, but I think uh, one point, one, one 
let's say one recommendation or one thing to, to improve, Espe especially now that the center is renovated and it is um, open with, uh, with a new spirit to work is for Pakistan Tennis Federation and especially for the center to work on participation. Obviously they need more kids to come that beautiful center, everything is there and then I would like to use uh, this um, chance that we have on TV to encourage more, especially more kids. I would like to encourage them to come and benefit from the nice facility they have uh, you have in Islamabad in the center uh, and uh, well hopefully with more kids entering this sport we would have more uh, and better junior players which is uh, which is the words of the ITF in International Tennis Federation more and better players to to join this sport in Pakistan. I'm so glad you s said that, uh, Amir Borghai, because I mean, as you said, the tennis center is beautiful, and I'm so glad you use this platform to encourage uh, youngsters to come uh, and play and learn over there. Luca, as I said, I'm going to give you the last word, something similar to what uh, Amir, uh, Amir Borghai just said, because you've seen you've seen so much. You've seen young tennis players <laughs> becoming. Uh, uh, professionals and some in some cases superstars so what your final word what advice do you have for young Pakistani tennis players who want to make it to the top what do they need they need uh, support from their families very often uh, we forget that uh, the success of tennis player is a project of the tennis family of the of the tennis community where he come from where he she come from and uh, obviously of some talented uh, coaches around him or her. My, my advice is to, to dream about what they want to be, um, to eat and sleep and think about tennis and to, and, and to participate in the sport following uh, the pathway the other successful uh, junior players and professional players if not in the country but in the region have done in the past well gentlemen this was very interesting and very encouraging thank you for coming to to pakistan and uh, helping to develop uh, this beautiful sport we, we we absolutely love tennis there is a history of tennis here and we just want to see it grow thank you very much for coming uh, mr luca santili and mr amir borghai it was a pleasure having you on thank you very much that's all we have time for keep watching sports extra on ptv world see you next time Bye bye